You was, you was the one beating on the table in high school? He used to beat on the table for the rap battles. You got a ball, I see. It's like four things in life I'm good at. That ain't one of them. Rapping ain't one of them. A good drunk freestyle, I can give you 30 minutes. Oh, yeah, then the sound, all this sound better then. But you also just say whatever. I suck, I got sense right now. Yeah. I don't have no sense at that point. I shoot people and I don't even have no gun. Yeah. <laughs> you, you say what you done heard on something. Yeah, I'm a gangster now. Yeah. Slide through the hood. Yeah. Ain't no good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I say whatever. You live in a gated community. Shut the <laughs> that <laughs> they have to dial your house in order Sit, to see. Sitting on the curb. You're right. about to swerve. In your long ass Say driveway. Say another word. Lying. <laughs> you lying ass motherfucker. Y'all know I sold weight, weight benches. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. My people always call me Friendly Freddy, but I'm just, I'm more nice. Yeah, you nice. I'm friendly. I never see my before. I'd be like, you lost some weight. You look good. Never seen him before. Yeah, that's. Weird. I know. Yeah, I'm more just like, hey, how you doing? Such a pleasure. God bless. Yeah. Like, that's my... I don't really bring the God into it. Yeah, I always hold my hands like this. Little prayer Oh, hands. thank you so much. It's so kind. That's actually a dominant position. Oh, I don't know what it is. I just... People that hold their hands, people that hold their hands like together in front of them, stuff like that. It's a, it's a, uh, I'm a, uh, it's an alpha position to be in. I know. In. I'm a hand talker, though. Yeah. So I try not to like be so active with people, you know? That, that, this, this is supposed to be like a dominant hand gesture. Somebody told me on the show years ago, somebody told me that shit. They were like, yeah, if you sit like this, it's supposed to be that you're dominant, it's a dominant yeah. position. So now I just be wiggle arms. I'm not dominant, KK. Wiggle, wiggle arms? Hey, hey! Hey, what's happening? How you doing? I'm great. I'm on food. Pleasure. Great pleasure. Great to see you. What's great up? Great to see you. How you hey. doing? Good. Good to see you. Yeah. For sure. Do we, for need sure. To, do we need to pour that for you? You got it? You straight? Pour what? We, we gentlemen, you know what I mean? Just wanted to make sure. She, do we got to pour? Oh, hell yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I got no, no orange juice. <laughs> no orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. When you were coming over, they wanted to make sure you had everything you needed. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know when the queen stepped in, you got to make sure yeah, she's straight. Yeah, yeah. Where you get that Apirex from, though? What you know about that? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Swagging on them people, you know what I'm saying? Hard, though. Old school shit. Yeah, definitely. That's <laughs> yeah. hard. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, only vision I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cow pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, Welcome to the pivot. That's Channing. This is Freddie T. I'm RC. Nice you, to meet y'all. Nice to meet you as well. I'm very excited about this. I don't even know if you even remember. You were feeling good. I ran it's into you Super Bowl, yeah. and your father. Yep. No, you, you want to know what's so crazy? You know, in part of me because I'm a female, but I be knowing players by y'all names and not by y'all faces. <laughs> I swear to God, like, <laughs> that's how I was. Like, when you told me, I'm like, oh, shit, I do know who you is, but it was just like, I don't be knowing. By nah, me. it was cool. It was cool to meet your pops, too. Yeah. Cool to meet oh, you. he loved it. Yeah, he was awesome. He was showing everybody um, the picture. He was like, yeah, I met uh, Ryan Clark. Yeah, so we appreciate <laughs> it. So I do want to have a question, though, right? How does Gloria Hallelujah Woods grow up in a Christian household with Kirk Franklin and Donnie McKirkland playing, become a uh, Grammy-nominated, BET Hip Hop Award-winning, iHeart Award-winning rapper, Glorilla, how does she get from there to this? God, for sure did. Um, and diligence, manifestation, and the hard work. I love it. And the middle name, hallelujah, and then your answer was God. <laughs> I would say some of your lyrics aren't biblical. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up in that household, and now the, your, your art of what you do, was it ever a, a conversation with your people, with your pastor, with your family, like, hey, y'all might not want to hear these lyrics to this next song? So when I was in church, I didn't start rapping until I got out of church. And so, like, right when I graduated high school, I want to say I stopped going to church, like, right when I started high school. And so, um... I didn't let my mama, I didn't tell my mama I was rapping when I first started because I thought she was gonna be judgmental about it. But she actually was supportive about it, but it was crazy because I didn't tell her my sister snitched. She was like, you know, um, 
Glory be rapping, blase, blase. And so out of nowhere, my mama called me like, so you be rapping? I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God, don't tell me you didn't already heard it and listen to it. I was so embarrassed, I promise, but she was supportive of it, so. Were you really inspired by Chief Keith? I think I read that somewhere. Yeah, he was one of my inspirations. Like, he one of my favorite rappers because when he came out, he just had his own sound. He started a whole sound. He was just young and turned. Who were the other inspirations? Musically, uh, I would say, like, it's so cliche with Beyonce. Yeah, for sure. I didn't get my style from her, but her work, her diligence, her work ethic and everything, and her performance, I love that about her. And um, Lil Wayne. Mm -hmm. So you said that your parents or your mom found out because your sister snitched. What was the conversation like when your pops first heard Nut Quick? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so crazy? <laughs> What's so crazy is when I first dropped the video to it, because my daddy, he don't got social media or nothing. Like, he, he old. You saw my daddy. He old. <laughs> but anytime, I guess he got his alerts, he subscribed to me on YouTube. So anytime a new song come out, he get it. So he called me one day. He just said, ha, 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 not quit. <laughs> he said, what you know about that, girl? <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I said, what you doing listening to that song, daddy? He said, you know, I like all your songs. I was like, OK. All right, whatever. But I wish I could call him right now. I swear to God, that's one of his favorite songs. <laughs> I don't know why. That's one of his favorite songs. But he called me screaming at in the phone. I was like, what's wrong with you? Well, every man has had his uh, yeah. his run-in <laughs> with a quick one. <laughs> we, when, when was that? Yeah, hey, yeah. We've all had a run-in with we one that didn't, it didn't quite go as long <laughs> as we planned walking into the room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> like Blake Man. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when you uh, when you got an opportunity to play tomorrow to for Gotti, yeah, what was his reaction? Because I know what my reaction was the first time I heard it, but when you're sharing a song like that with a Memphis legend who is giving back and putting other people on, that's yeah. from Memphis, and you know you got one, yeah, and you play it for him. What was that like for you? Okay, so uh, I made tomorrow before I blew up and got big. So I made tomorrow. Okay, my first song, If and If, I shot that video, and right after that video shoot, I went to the studio and recorded Tomorrow. And it was just me before Cardi. And so when I was going to the label means, I was letting everybody hear the song, because, you know, they'd be like, let me hear your other music. Nobody was just really catching on to it. Like, nobody really liked it. And so when God had called me and I had went to meet with him on the yacht, and I played Tomorrow, he was like, ooh, this is hard. Like, and that was my next single I put out after that he got announced that I signed to him. And he the one that made the play with putting Cardi on. Got you. Like, they surprised me with that. I didn't even know Cardi was going to be on it. And so God had put that play together. You said Cardi's on the song. They say that's your cousin and Lil Uzi Vert, I heard. Mm -hmm. Are y'all black people cousins or real cousins? Because I got cousins, but we, our, our parents aren't related. <laughs> they just my cousins. Well, what cousins? They cousin cousins or? They cousins. <laughs> 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 but you, my ain't, folks. you ain't even know she was gonna be on the song. No, I didn't know. And th how I found out was I was in the studio and I was actually working on another song and I was like, hmm, Cardi might sound good on me. So I DM'd her. I was like, I got this song that sure sound good on. She was like, I just got done doing your other song. I'm like, what other song you talking about? So she sent me the clips of it in my DM of her verse. I was like, no way. So God and Rex was in the my manager, Rex, they was in the studio. So I, I'm texting them. I'm like, I called them. I said, so y'all, when y'all was going to tell me that Cardi was on this song? They were like, oh, shit. How you found out about it? They, I don't know what way they were going to try to surprise me in, but I found out early because I tried to get her on another song. People don't always see the grind. And you started rapping, you know, pretty pretty young. Mm -hmm. uh, but once they once they got a chance to, to see you, it seems like things just kind of shot here. And then you have some of the biggest stars in the world dancing to your music. Yeah. Speaking specifically of King James, LeBron, yeah. probably one of the most visible people on the How does it make you feel when you see LeBron rapping your music, dancing to your music, just giving it back to the world? That was another different feeling because 
it's one thing to have people dancing to your music, then it's another thing to have men dancing to your music mm -hmm. as a female rapper. Right. Then it's a third thing to have LeBron James dancing to it, you feel me? Because LeBron <laughs> James don't be dancing, he don't be doing it to everybody music, you feel me? So when he did it to, yeah, Glow, I was just like, oh yeah, that's out of here. Like, it made me feel good, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I still take everything, every time something new happens, I still get excited. Like, my excitement from the rapping, not gone yet. Are you used to being a celebrity? Because you can't go nowhere, I'm pretty sure. Like, how does that part make you feel? I mean, I kind of got used to being a celebrity on that end. Like, I can't go in stores no more by myself, none of that. But I still be acting shocked to see other celebrities. Yeah. Like, I still act like, oh my God! Ah! Who was your favorite person to meet? Like, the person you really fangirled out Beyonce. about? Beyonce. I just met her again yesterday. I met her at the Grammys last year, and then at the awards, I had just got done presenting the award to TLC. I walked past Beyonce room, I was like, oh shit, I was kind of scared. They were like, uh, they had asked, can I talk to Beyonce? And she let me in her room, I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and she always be so nice to me, and she just, I feel like she loved me as much as I love her, like, <laughs> for real. Like, and I get super geeked every time I meet her. So yeah, Beyonce, I love Beyonce. I see you can see now, uh, when you were on your 90 day celibacy. Uh, I see you can see now. When you were on your uh, 90 day <laughs> celibacy run, you said you, your vision was blurred. Uh, what made you decide to do that? What was the thought process? He said, I see you can see. You got vision now. Because you said you couldn't see. You had. Well, I restored my vision. <laughs> <laughs> you restored your vision. Yeah. Huh? Well, see, I had went on there because before I blew up, I had went on a 60-day cleanse. And it was like right at the end of the 60-day cleanse, I blew up. So I was like, OK, fasting really helped. And so the end of last year, like last year, it was kind of, it wasn't rough for me, but I overthought a lot last year. And so I was like, okay, I need to reset. So I'm going to do another cleanse. And so that's how this started. But it was a hell of a ride. I didn't finish it, but you know, I did 30, I did about 50 days. When you say a, a sex cleanse? Dead, um, yep, that was it. Because <laughs> 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 the first one was liquor and it, and nigga period, but... But how's that gonna help anything? Because I mean, it help you focus. No, it doesn't. It frustrates you, gets you built up inside. <laughs> no, cause it make you take it. See, y'all men, so it's different. Cause like y'all gotta do this shit. Like I know men that be like, oh no, I cannot do that whatsoever. I cannot go twenty four hours without. Mm. I, you know, women different. Mm. And I feel like sometimes I don't feel like women are a distraction to y'all as much as men are a distraction to us. Hmm. Yeah. And it re you really you feel more focused. Yeah. With no action. No action. I was I ain't, up, but... I ain't gonna try that. <laughs> I ain't gonna you try went it. blind? Yeah. <laughs> so who wants to go blind? You know, I got like actually um I'm kind of back in that mode, and that's why I got these sunglasses on because my eye kind of I ain't got no <laughs> I ain't got no makeup on my eyes because my vision. You know what I'm you saying? You know what? That's God telling you something. You we can see my eyes. Like I ain't got no makeup on my eyes because like my eye been kind of. Jumping again. It been twitching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the eye on so. <laughs> yeah, he's doing it again. So was it was it during a moment of uh, cleansing when you created uh, the anthem "Fuck Nigga Free"? Uh huh. For real? Yep. So wow. the cleanse started. This was 2022. It started March the first, and then it was supposed to end it May the first, and so. I made Fuck Nigga Free April the 21st, and I dropped it April 29th. And then by May, I was blown up. So I was like, okay, something worked. Cause the right. 60 days over and now, I went from this to this. We talked to a number of artists, and I asked them the same thing though. Like when you got one, you talking about Fuck Nigga Free, talking about tomorrow, like, do you know you got one? Do you got to talk to Rex? You got to, you know, talk to your people? Or like, when you going to, like, after you dropped the verse, you're like, ah, we got it. I ain't gonna lie, it's a, it's a first song that I thought was the one that won the one. So like, it's the first song that I didn't play that I didn't let my team wear, and they was like, yeah, this one hard, and it won that. Yeah. So you just never know. I feel like it be with the wave sometimes. Like, right. sometimes you could drop shit ahead of its time. You mentioned being able to have men 
rock with your song. Like, yeah, Glow for sure is that, you know, I know dudes, they put their name in it if it rhyme with Glow. Mm -hmm. You know, they got cats in the car, they probably riding with it loud in the car, then they pick their homeboy up, try to turn something else on. <laughs> then they homeboy hop in the car, he won't listen to it anyway. I know you said like, there's more bass in, in your rap voice than in your normal voice, but you kind of like bad chick, real Negro, all in one, right? Mm -hmm. Like all wrapped into one. What was growing up like for you that you could connect to like being an uh, independent, strong woman, but also like dudes in the streets could vibe with what you say? My mama got 10 kids, six boys, four girls. I was the girl that always hung with the boys. Like I was always the one playing. That's why I like football so much. Like I grew up playing man in the NCAA and that type of shit. I always was a tumble out of all my mama kids, but my mama was a strong woman. Of course she got 10 kids, so. You know, I just got, you know, the feminine side from my mama or whatever, but I always just hung around dudes more, like my whole life. Like even now, my team full of men. Other than my glam team, everybody else on my team is a man. Like, mm. I just vibe more with men, so I feel like that's a, another reason why men can relate to me more. And the, the shit talking. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. I always been around men growing up. You know what I'm saying? I prefer being around men more. Like, you know, they don't be fake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Girls be fake and it's too much chit chat and all that shit. I don't be with it. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but Glow, you you about 92 pounds. <laughs> I'm talking about you go. You can't tell me up. I ain't the biggest now you though. You see what they want to do. I'm not the one. They can't tell me I ain't the biggest though. You feel me? <laughs> and then you know where I, where I come from too. The part of me because I come from super ghetto. You know what I'm saying? So you know I'm just a product of my environment. Frazier. Is, yep. that, is mm -hmm. that where it's from? Yep, I mean, you right. did say that whoever Dane Lillard was with, she couldn't whip you. <laughs> you did say that. I mean, he was asked afterwards, had he reached out, and he said he had no comment. So, I mean, <laughs> do you have no comment, too? Hey, at the end of the day... They gon' in. They got in. <laughs> the day got in. <laughs> I, love that. I love that. Boy, that was one, boy. Hey, you dropped it. <laughs> so, really, um, you say you hang out with the boys, but speak on that 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 experience, man. I think that was amazing to see you there at the uh, the White House. You know, cause you I always talk about exposure. Yeah. Right, exposure leading to expansion. The more you see, the more you'll be able to learn and kind of grow from there. What was, and you move around too, like the first lady, we've seen your team over there. So. <laughs> what, what was that experience like and what was your favorite part about it all? It was just cool all around because I, I'm pretty sure mostly everybody, well, mostly everybody wants to be able to go to the White House. It's an honor. And so like just walking up to it, like I'm like, oh my God, I'm really finna walk in here. Oh my God. And it just was crazy. I was just saying all the history that I've been learning about all in school just right there in my face in real life. And then meeting the president and the vice president made it even more cool. I'm like, everybody don't get to do this. Mm -hmm. I was so geeked. Like, I was high without even being high. Did you know going into it, you was going to hit him with, yeah, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just like I just said, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it, say it, fuck it. And it was dope. You yeah. are and I've only been around you for a little bit, you are impossible to dislike. Like, for Thank real, you. like, your spirit is, is just different. Like, you come in the room, you light up the room, and immediately in meeting you, it's like, oh, she just one of our folks. You know, yeah. and so I think, I think that's why people gravitate to you in the way that they do, but I'm not from Memphis, so I'm gonna try to say this right. Everything, everything, mm -hmm. right, coming soon. But recently, we saw the social media post with you and Megan, we hit a Soldier Boy beat, in the back, you in a very short time have been able to collab with all of these artists that you're on the same tier with already, the Megan Thee Stallions, to have Cardi B jump on a song. What's it been like for you to just be truly hitting your stride and be able to collab with women like that? I love it because I'm a fan of Cardi, I'm a fan of Megan, for sure. And so like doing the song with both of them, I'm like, is this real? You know what I'm saying? And then both of them just got good spirits, their energy be genuine. Yeah, I just feel blessed. I feel good about it. I'm excited for me and Megan record. It's so good. So you're going to be going on tour with Megan. Is there any intimidation, anxiousness, nervousness about being a part of something so big? No, I'm excited about it, actually. Well, yeah, I'm anxious, for sure. But um, 
Yeah, I'm just excited because me and her, it's just like we got them two personalities, them two Southern. Where you from? I'm from New Orleans. Exactly. You said you like our food. I do. I love it. <laughs> I guess the best food in America, stamped. Real talk. Hold on. But, Memphis, Memphis ain't got the best food? I thought Memphis, Memphis had the Memphis food best. good, but yeah. New Orleans food the best. Oh, wow. You know, I'm going to tell the truth at the end don't, of the day. Don't tell him that, right. though. I'm going to tell gotta, the truth. And she walk around with hot sauce. You got to be Real honest. talk, I do. <laughs> and she ain't even need that in New Orleans. You really, yeah. I don't. Like, it's no question that when I go to New Orleans, I'm going to eat something that I like. Right. So, <laughs> New Orleans take oh. it. He, he, they got it. He, he, he love it. Look at it. He just like the bread. I agree with you, though. For real, I agree. New Orleans food off the chain. Spicy and everything. So, yeah. what you think? Yeah. What's that? New Orleans my favorite. I, and I know, and I hate to tell him that, but New Orleans <laughs> my favorite food, too. It's what do you think? Same. Oh, OK, so what we I can all agree that New Orleans got <laughs> yes. the best food. You know, but I mean, I got sidetracked, getting excited. But really, like, just back to having an opportunity to, to be on tour. You know, you talked about being able to collab with Megan, collab with Cardi. You've collabed with Lotto. Oh, just, yeah. just where you are now, and then now getting that big stage so people all around the country can know glow. You said you were excited about it. What are you most excited about? Just to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, like I said, our chemistry is so good. And we still putting it together, you know what I'm saying? But we didn't basically sold out almost the whole tour sold out. And you know, Memphis is actually a hard city to sell out and we sold Memphis out. So I'm excited about the to turn up in the hometown. Both of the Houston, they sold out, I think. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'm ready. I never, he saw Megan live perform, so I'm ready to see this. America. <laughs> <laughs> I just take the catalog. It's, that's that Memphis. It's the XP, man. It's that Memphis <laughs> shit. She said Kirby don't Kirby. I went my jewelry drawer. I was like, I don't have none of those. <laughs> I was like, damn it. <laughs> hey, call him my jewelry. Hey, man. Y'all got Kirby's? <laughs> y'all sell Kirby's? Do y'all sell Kirby's? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I looked at your whole website. <laughs> you got Nan Kirby. You got Nan Kirby <laughs> on your entire website. <laughs> to be, though, like, honestly, though, to be in this, in this position, you know, right now and have an opportunity to keep ascending, like, you wrote a song and you said you wrote it at Taco Bell KFC. Yeah. Where do you get inspiration from for your music? for what your topics are gonna to be, for the way you put lines together. What inspires you, or is it for you, wherever it hits you, you just do it? It's like super random. Like, say for instance, we say something right now, like I can, it's gonna stick to my head, I'm gonna be like, I can make a bar out of it. When I get up from this interview, I'm gonna type it in my notes, and it's just gonna be a bar in my notes. And so if I'm at the studio listening to beats, I'll be like, let me listen to beats and see which beat I can put this line on and make a song out of it. Or, you know, sometimes what I'm going through, I just make a song about it. I just get the writing about however I feel. About to do a tour with Megan, get a chance to walk in Beyonce's dressing room just when you want to. Yeah. Like, why, have you made it in your mind? And why, why have you made it? Why are you in the position you're in right now with all the success you have? God. <laughs> it can't, I, I love God, too. <laughs> It can't just be him. Like, is it that, like you're saying, is it is it your work ethic of saying that you're going to write down every every note? Oh, yeah, is that it, too. Is it just something different upstairs? Like, there's a lot of female country rappers that would love to be yeah. Glorilla. Um, you know, you just got to be different. You got to stand out. Like, you know, ain't nobody that, that never just sounded like me been out. Like, I come with this voice that you never heard before. You know what I'm saying? Like, this crazy accent to come with it, you know what I'm saying? And, and like I said, I'm constantly working and I'm constantly manifesting, I'm believing in myself, so all that together. And all the positivity, like, and like Ryan, like, like RC said, like you walk in the room and you just like, oh yeah, that's, that's cuz right there. And you just, you're, you're so vibrant, your, your, mm -hmm. your light is so bright, as, as, as I say sometimes. But with the fame, the success, the celebrity, what Biggie says, more money, more problems. Drake said, bring on the problems. But just mm -hmm. a celebrity, like, is there, what, what's the pullback to not being Gloria anymore, not being Glorilla? 
Um, you know, everybody look at you like a, a ticket. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody got their hand out, of course. Yeah, just people look at you different. You know, they treat you different. You know, not the people, your core people, but you know, certain people who you want around like that, like now they put you on such this high pedestal. I'm really the same person, I just made it. Yeah. You feel me? So that, that be the only thing. How do you decide where you, who you give money to? See, I'm not the person to give out money like that. I ain't doing it. Like, people know not to come ask me for shit. You gotta really need it. Cause, yeah. cause when I, if I was to go bad, which one of y'all gonna give back to me? You feel me? Right. Yeah. So like, that's what I'm thinking about. Like, all right, I, I ain't just got this shit to be giving out. I got it, but once, if I just keep doing this, then when it's all gone, which one of y'all gonna put it back in my hand? So I don't just be easy to give out money like this to people. My mom and my daddy, they know they straight. You know what I'm saying? My, my, my folks, my core people, but everybody else, you want some money from me? Come work for it. Yeah. Mm. You could get on the payroll. Cool. <laughs> I ain't just gonna get it out though. So boss man, God, he, he, he's done great, I think, in building the CMG roster, right? What sort of influence has he been in your life? You know, aside from the business, just as a mentor or whatever in the game, and how, like, what messages has he shared with you in that same regards of taking care of your bread, knowing how to, you know, uh, spot the, the leeches around you or, or, or people that don't mean you no know, good? Like, what has he taught you? Gotta always say, save your money. Don't go uh, spending money on a lot of bullshit. You know, sometimes he ain't even been to say this stuff to me. I've been to see him say it on the interview, right. and now I take it in. Yeah, then got it like a super business businessman, mm -hmm. and so I be trying to pick up some of that from him, like how he reserved his shit. You know, you talked about not giving money out, but you did give back twenty thousand to your middle school. Yeah and you made that decision at a young age to think so philanthropically, how important was it to not only be present and able to do that, but to show people from right where you're from, you mentioned what it's like where you're from in yeah. Frazier. How important was it to show people that you can make it? And when you do make it, it is possible to come back and give to those who are walking the same hallways you are. You know, I always wished when I was younger, it was somebody to come back and do that for for me and for, you know what I'm saying? The closest thing that I saw, it wasn't even my school though, Barack Obama, he came to Memphis to uh, BTW High School and he had did a speech, but I feel like he came to he came to Memphis. You know, people don't come to Memphis to do that type of shit. So, you know, I feel like it was important to, to give the youth right now what I didn't have, you know what I'm saying? Because um, when I just did my middle school last year, I had donated the money for them to go on field trips and everything. You know, back then, if we didn't have the money, we weren't going. You know what I'm saying? We just had to sit it out. And so I feel good to be able to get the kids money to go on that field trip. Go, you are very, like, normal, like, very regular. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you, have mean? A, you have a superstar glow for sure. Like, when you would, no pun intended, I guess. Like, when you walk in, <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's what superstars look like. Yeah. But in talking to you, like, you still Gloria, hallelujah, from Memphis. Like, you could tell, like, you still feel that what's dating like now like you mentioned you can't go shopping <laughs> right and you yeah. see, you know you even tweeted you only been cheated on one time mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> what was he stupid what was that like i got i've been really i only been in one relation one, i'm gonna say two relationships my whole life and my first relationship fucked me up it's because that was the first time i ever got cheated on because I used to always feel like I was always the friend who didn't have nigga problems. And all my friends, like they got pregnant early and they always used to get cheated on. I used to be like, and they'll be crying. I used to be like, damn, I don't think it's that crucial. Like what you crying for? And so when it finally happened to me and I actually felt where they was coming from, you know, I lost my appetite real bad. Like my first heartbreak, it was with the same nigga. Like I never caught him cheating. Like, I never physically caught him cheating, but it was just like clues that I'd be like, I know you cheat. And every time I just like, it's a different feeling. Like my heart dropped to my ass. I can't eat for so many days. I'm like, I remember one time I was on the way to my mama's house and I was in the car crying to God. I was like, God, please, if you let me get over this nigga, I won't ever do this again. <laughs> like, please restore my appetite. Take this heartache away. I, I said, I'll never do this again if you let me get over it. And so 
I don't be trying to just really get into that no more because that's not a good feeling getting your heart broke at all. And I thought it was for fake at first. And when I really felt it, that's why I be so hard now. Like, Is that why you said told him earlier that women don't affect men the way that men affect women? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because y'all, do y'all lose y'all appetite? Y'all head yeah. heartbreak? He couldn't have been black if black men don't cheat. <laughs> All right, Charlemagne, Lil Duval. <laughs> Lil Duval. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know Don't what? start. Don't start. <laughs> Don't start. What, what, what was his race? Because if we don't do things he, that he, was, he was Latino. He would not have been a Latino or uh, Asian man or something. I don't know who he was. He was an African American man. <laughs> and he cheated. And I said, I'm never going through this again, God. If you give me out this situation. But that was the reason when I finally got over him, that's when I made the fuck nigga free song. Because I finally got over him and I feel like I was fuck nigga free. And so, yeah. And and I knew, I knew we were gonna have a chance to sit down with you. So I had I called my nieces and got some information. <laughs> and my niece says, you gotta ask her about pouring jungle juice and barbecue sauce <laughs> on some girl's car. So <laughs> I need the story, the reasoning behind why you would pour barbecue sauce and jungle juice on somebody's items. Because I was hurt. I was, I was, I got cheated on. Because, okay, so bam. <laughs> I had broke up with the nigga because I was mad because he was his friends all day. And so, you know, I had his location on my phone. And I think he forgot I had his location because he was kind of slow. He was, <laughs> th he was kind of slow. Uh -huh. And so um, I'm like, no, you can't come back. And so I'm watching his location. He was at his friend's house. So I'm thinking, okay, he going to spend the night over there. But you know how we say stuff and don't mean it? Like, come home. Why is he not coming home? And so I'm watching. I'm looking at the location. I see him drive, and I'm like, where the hell he going? It's like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And so he always used to tell me, he used to be like, yeah, his baby mama stayed in Raleigh, but I never gave too much fucks about it. So when I saw his location in Raleigh, oh, I hopped in that car so fast. I said, he told me his baby mama live in Raleigh. So I'm finna, what? Me and my two friends, we hopped in the car. I don't play them type of games. Who you playing with? What, what, what your friends was going to do? They, they were, just rode with me. OK. They were support. Yeah. They were just the support and you, system. And you grabbed the barbecue sauce with nah, the No, I didn't even grab it yet, because my intentions weren't even on doing nothing to her. Mm -hmm. I was strictly on him. And so I pulled up to the apartment. And so when I pulled up to the apartment, I go on the baby mama Facebook page. I look at her pictures, and I see the background. I'm like, oh, yeah, these the same apartments. The location brought me to. And so. I'm looking around, I'm looking at her picture she took, and I figured out what car was hers because she took pictures in front of her car in front of her apartment. So I went exactly to that spot. And so I'm knocking on the door. I wasn't even going to do nothing to her. I'm trying to make him come. They in there quiet, not trying to act like nobody in there and shit. And so I said, all right. She gets a text of me or some shit on Facebook cursing me out, sleep. So I'm like, all right, bitch, I ain't even to play with you. I'm like, just come outside. I'm like, I don't even want you. I'm on him. He was still acting like he wanted there. He wasn't answering the phone and shit, but she was acting like he wanted there. I said, I know he in her, bitch. I don't even want nothing with you. But she started talking rowdy and talking shit. So I pulled around to the store, and I had just was looking for shit to fuck her collar with. I really was looking for some paint, but there wasn't no paint up in the uh, gas station. And so I just got, like, the two messy things I could see. So I saw the barbecue sauce and the red jungle juice. <laughs> I pulled back around her. And so uh, I really went in my trunk first. I had a big ass bushel knife in my trunk and I didn't, I never stabbed no tires out before. So I thought they was gonna stab it out, but the knife kept bending. <laughs> it won, it won't stab the tires out. So I'm like, fuck. So that's when I just said, fuck it. I just, she had a white car and I just put the barbecue sauce and the jungle juice all over it. And yeah. Hey, Glow, we, we passed that though now. Yeah, I don't do that no more. Oh, okay. We just... No. <laughs> Experience and growth. Right, right. And growth. You know, you got to go through it and get through it. You feel me? And learn so from we, it. So we learned don't mess with Glow. Don't mess with me. But was Glow in love? I said I was. And so that's why was, I said I don't want to do it no more. So you was heavy in love. I was in love real bad. I'm telling you, I was crying to God. If you if you crying to God, ask him about something serious. I said, I never want nobody with that much power over me to where I can't eat. Like the food look good and I can't eat it because Damn. I lost my appetite because of a person. I never want nobody to have that much control over me. And I never knew that somebody could do that. And so once I got out of it, that's how I am, how I am now. I don't be trying to get back into it. Like, how old were you at the time? I was 20. But but go. Eventually. 
eventually. Eventually, not in my twenties though. Well, so we're all here for at some point. You need companionship, right? Yeah. The Bible says man's not meant to live alone. So when you are doing these things now and you are accomplishing things, mm -hmm. who do you share it with? Who do you celebrate with? My friends, my family. So there's never like a longing to have a person there. Yeah. <laughs> then I ain't gonna lie, like, I see how other people, <laughs> I see how niggas that still be cheating. And not even my niggas, but niggas who I, I be seeing this shit, I be like, damn. I would hate it if you was my nigga, like. <laughs> <laughs> then it's even worse now because whoever I date got to be on my type of level. Because yep. even the nigga I was in love with, he was a little regular broke ass mission ticket and he had me fucked up like that. So I know it's going to get even worse now with who I date now because, you know, not y'all. Y'all might be not shit either. What? <laughs> what? I'm gonna give y'all the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Black men don't cheat. <laughs> but niggas ain't shit. I don't think that's a, I, I don't believe that's necessarily a broad statement that you can make. I believe in some cases women are not as well. And they're actually- I feel like women get made like that. Like the way I am now, like I'm probably not worth a damn right now. And it, it was because I was made like that. You know, everybody get, I think men are naturally not shit. And I learned to not blame y'all for it. I feel like, not y'all, men. I feel like y'all naturally do what y'all do. And I don't, I don't feel like there's nothing that motherfuckers can hold against them. Well, one, you can definitely hold it against us if we do stupid things, uh, especially if we lie, right? Yeah. I, think, I think if a man is honest with you, in where he is in life and, and mm -hmm. who he is and how he feels about you and the way that he's going to move and you're hurt by him making the movements he told you he was going to make anyway, that's on you. Mm -hmm. You know, like George Bush said, you know, fool me twice, can't get fooled again. Right. Right. But if he lies to you and he puts you in a position where he sold you a bill of goods that he doesn't deliver on, like you can't hold it against him. It should have been held I mean, against yeah, him. yeah, you can. Yeah. But... It's like this gonna keep happening with every motherfucker you run into. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully not. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I didn't, the one person messed me up in the head real bad, so like I got this bad but, perception. And there, there was a silver lining in that particular situation because you hear a lot of times that artists talk about experiences in life mm -hmm. that lead to certain song in, in, in their artistry, right? Mm -hmm. Your your biggest song, I believe, F and F, right? Mm -hmm. Which actually led you to CMG and signing a uh, major deal, without that experience with old boy, you might not have that, that song. You're right, everything for sure happened for a reason, but they don't take away from the fact that niggas ain't shit. Well, <laughs> I mean, well, so going back to Boss Man d -Lo, the finesse remix, <laughs> now your lyrics in there sound like, like, like Big Glow got a certain type of energy. You talking about the dude saying shit. You say, I, I made you, I'll make your favorite nigga. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Your favorite <laughs> ex <laughs> or something like, whatever it is, something like that. Uh -huh. But that's that same energy, right? So Big Glow, if you sit back and listen to the word, Big Glow ain't shit in that song. I'm not, I'm not no more. And I can accept it. You know, it's all about being self-aware. I'm very self-aware that I'm not shit no more. But I, I was made like this. When I turn 30, I hopefully to change. I'm, I'm, I hope I change. My perception just. Are you an honest person though? I'm super honest. I'm super self-aware, I'm super honest. It's really probably nothing nobody can tell me about myself that I don't already know. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's some shit for sure, but I can accept it. Like if you tell me, I ain't gonna lie, um, you talk too much. I'd be like, damn, I'm gonna think about it. Okay, I might do talk, talk too much, but I'm self-aware. And being self-aware then, and you can say that you ain't nothing when it comes to dating, what are your best attributes though as a friend, as a woman, as a person? Like why, why should Glow have close friends to celebrate with? Why should people want to be on your team? Because who people are in relationships to be don't necessarily matter. I'm super cool, I'm super funny. I'm not serious. Like, you know, sometimes people take life too serious. I'm not one of them type of people. I laugh at everything. Like, mm -hmm. even when shit be about me, like, people talk shit about me, people don't even know. I be laughing. Like, somebody say, dang, Glorilla, 
look like this. I'm going to be laughing hard as fuck. I might not say nothing on the internet, but I probably thought it was funny. Like, I don't take, I'm not too serious about shit. I'm funny. I'm caring about people. I only get mean when people make me be mean. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm just a good person. Chan, I have a question. Your teeth or hers? Who's your teeth? I can see you got the just... You got the real teeth? No, these ain't mine. This is bad. Oh. Hell no, these ain't mine. <laughs> My shit look like a raccoon back in the day. <laughs> mine did too. I threw them across the top. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he brought it up. I said, yeah, she got a hell of a doctor because I got one, too. I she threw, got a hell of a doctor. I threw 20, 21 racks into this top this top run, and these things special, though. Hey, you, 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 you got you a little something. I had to drop 25. 25? Uh-huh. But, but I got the bottom end top. You got the bottom end top? Uh-huh. Yeah, see, I... I I'm, I still got a little little animal in me. I need some stuff to uh, scrape off chicken wings <laughs> and oysters and all that craziness. I still be on there. Everybody got you a floss, don't it? What's that? You can't do them with the veneers? Floss? No, no, no. You can't. You can't. You can't eat the crazy oh, stuff no, with the veneers. No, no, yeah, no. you gotta eat that. I be biting on the side hey, and shit. Yeah, be <laughs> <laughs> shoving that, 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 that chicken wing way back here. <laughs> For real, talk. See with crab legs. I don't even crab my. Crack my own crab legs up no more. I have to ask somebody to do it for me. Crack your crab legs. That's that's when you know you made it. Yeah, you got you got a crab leg cracker. A, a personal no, crab leg. No, like I'm leg. talking about, like say for instance, my friend right there. I'd be like, can you crack these up for me? Like they know I can't crack them open myself. Like wow. they'll do it. They will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's you know what that that's what I was gonna say because you were talking just back to the to the relationship thing. You gotta find a good man, but he is not gonna be as successful as you. And that's fine. But you just said I was just with some dude from Memphis back then. But like I think to be happy, you might have to find just a dude from Memphis because a very successful. Not person, no Memphis dude. But a, it, a, just another dude. Like <laughs> look, look where you are. Look, look like. I don't got no problem with it. Still talking to regular people though. But it's like now I don't know. It might be my type. Like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It might be my type that's fucked up. The type of the type of man I like is probably just not a good man. Mm -hmm. So like maybe it's somebody that go to goddamn the work is somewhere that I ain't never seen before that's a good man that I ain't never met because that ain't my type. You feel me? Yeah. But I really feel like I want to talk to a regular person. I don't like the industry, motherfucker. But that, that's the man that's going to crack your, cra crack your crab legs for you. Exactly. Because if we do it, that little incisor might flip out and we're going to be <laughs> fired. <high. laughs> no, I don't feel like everybody I, I talk to got to be like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't think that at all. You, um, you're at the Super Bowl, you bring your pops, and growing up in a family that was Christian. Yeah. And like you said, you started to rap, your dad likes your songs, he talks about, you know, nut quick and all those things. Um, it seemed like it'd be so hard for him to let that come out of his mouth. He'd be like, nut quick. <laughs> don't start, he don't, don't start. start. Don't you don't start. He don't, he don't curse. Yeah. Oh, you that's don't why. Curse? That's why he's struggling. Oh, I he don't talk like nasty. That. Yeah, I want to yeah. get like that. You can't yeah, get so like that. Your music won't be as good. So, RC, right. speaking of nut quick, what do we have? Thank you very, <laughs> thank you very much. You know, for for you though, the your your parents being supportive in that, and you being able to say, you know, nah, I ain't nothing, or this is what has changed. What is that relationship like for adult Gloria with them? Are you able to talk to your parents about these same things the way you're talking to us and share with them? Nah, my heart was broke. That's why I act like this. You know, because I grew up in a house where Donnie McClurkin and Kurt Franklin was played all the time. Mm -hmm. And there's certain conversations I can't have with my mother that I can have with my dad because they're different. I don't have a conversation with neither one of my parents because my parents are older. My dad is 73, my mama 60. Mm. I'm 24. I ain't never been comfortable. I think I maybe could if I wanted to, but I never been found the comfortability to be able to talk to them like that. You know, sometimes I let it fly with my mama, but I just, nah. You've accomplished so many things, you know, what's next for you? Like, what, what do you want to do? How do you want to be seen? You know, you mentioned seeing certain people and being excited, even though that you're a celebrity. You mentioned the Beyonce. And now you're going on tour with Megan. For you, where does this career take you? Does Glorilla want to do TV? Does she want to do movies? You know, what sort of artist do you want to be? Like when you see yourself five years from now, 
because you're just getting in this. Where is Glorilla? One person career who I uh like and that I want to kind of not exactly follow, but just the inspiration to me is Rihanna. I, I love Rihanna route she took. Like she did her big one in music for however 10, 10, 15, however long, however many years those was. Then she went off into being like a mogul, like being a billionaire, starting her own business. That's the route I want to take. She not she also had two babies and found herself a man. Is when that, she was is that, in her thirties. When she was in her thirties. Twenty eight, I'm gonna start coming down. I turned twenty five this year. Twenty eight, I'm gonna start slowing it down. Then thirties, I'm done with the twenty year old shit. So you mentioned uh, Beyonce, and you mentioned just now Rihanna. You've had some big collabs with a whole lot of other artists. Are there any like dream, absolute dream collabs that you would like to do going forward? Beyonce. Okay, that's one. Give me two more. Rihanna. Yeah. If she if she decide to do music, we never know when Rihanna that's gonna do fact. some more music. That's true. That's true. <laughs> We've been waiting on Rihanna since her last album, but Rihanna, Beyonce. There's no guy artist that you think doing a collab with them would be just an amazing experience, both, both what you do professionally and personally. Like, it's all women. Like, just, like, on some dream shit, like, it's some men that yeah. I would want to have no problem doing songs with, but just on some dream shit, it's right. like... It's your dream, so that's two. Give me one more. One more, okay. Yeah. Oh, Justin Timberlake. Mm. I like no, that. No, he's from Memphis. He talented. Yeah. 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 He's from Memphis, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. For, he back on tour, too, now, right? He is. Yeah, he's been running around. I think he got something in Florida um, down where we at in November. Yeah, and he had put out a new album. For you, you know, you mentioned earlier that Chief Keef was somebody who, you know, you saw in the business and you liked the way he rapped, you liked the way he brought a different sound. Beyonce being an inspiration as well. When you look at the projects you've done, what is the project you point to where you felt like you realized, okay, I can really be something in this business? It wasn't really a song that made me feel like that. It was the things I was doing after I blew up, like getting awards, being nominated at the Grammys in my first year. Like I didn't, I never in a million years would have thought if Neff would have been got a Grammy on, hmm. but it did. So like that, I got the uh, hip hop award for the um, breakthrough artist. It was that type of stuff right. that was making me feel like. And that. yeah, Glow, like you have a lot of former Glows in the video, yeah. which is like, I think the, the coolest part, you know, uh, you grew up 106 in part time, right? Mm -hmm, you watched yeah. 106 mm -hmm. in part. Like that was when we had real videos. Right. Like watching that video on YouTube, I was like, oh, this is a real video. Like she put time into this, like this mattered to her. What would you say though, to that young glow that's at the, that's at the drive through serving you your food as you come through in the big body? What would you tell that person when they weren't believing in themselves or they were doing those jobs that obviously weren't this one? I would have said everything I said in your head glow. <laughs> <laughs> Keep running circles around these nail holes. I would say stop overthinking because I overthink a lot. Like I'm an overthinker. And so um, me telling myself that in the song, like it just gave me a different type of confidence to just remind myself, stop overthinking like you got it. They can't fuck with you, really. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, I would tell myself to just keep doing you. Like, don't let nothing, no, it's nothing nobody can say that'll stop you from being who you want to be. Mm -hmm. Because actually, when I first blew up, I went to, you know, the DJ Coalition mm -hmm. stuff they be having. I did that um, around the time FNF was hot, and I hadn't put out another song after FNF. And so I had went and performed tomorrow for the DJs. And so after I got done performing the song, everybody was quiet. Like, it didn't get no round of applause or nothing. And so as all the DJs going around with the mic saying what they feel, they was like, um, it's cool, but you know, you gotta come out with another song like F and F. Like, everybody kind of, they, they didn't like shit on it, but they shitted on the song. Like, they made me feel like the song went good after I knew it was good. And then it blew up like right after that. And so I tell myself, you can't listen to haters. You know what right. I'm saying? Or not haters, because they want haters. You know, that's probably what they want to feel. But you can't let what nobody else say interfere with how you feel. You just got to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else going to believe you. And, and I think that brings me to, you know, not allowing people to try to tweak you off your spot. You got to stand on it. And I, we've been here for, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes, whatever it is. 
and through the conversation, people, they see that you smile, they see how you carry yourself, they see all of the good stuff, the awards, they, they've heard that by now. They don't always see the struggle, like the grind and the struggle and the stuff that's kind of under the surface. Was there ever a moment you wanted to, to, to quit? And if there were, what motivated you not to? Okay, so it was time before I blew up and after I did blow up, blow up that I sleep on to quit. So before I blew up, it'll be like, and it ain't even hating, it'll just be like, you will see certain shit going up and I'll be like, dang, why my, why my stuff not doing it? But I'll never start hating. I'll be like, I'll try to study like, what is it that I'm not doing? That, right. Cause I see this person, they doing good, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like my stuff good and it's not doing it. And it'll like make me feel depressed sometimes. Like I'll post a song and it won't get the feedback I want when I know it's a good song. And so they'll have me want to stop sometimes because I'll be like, okay, maybe this just ain't for me. Like, right. And then after I blew up, like last year, like I said, last year, it wasn't a rough year, but it was because I didn't drop a lot of music last year because I was overthinking. And right. so... I dropped the song and like everybody shitted on the song. Like nobody liked the song. And so I was like, you know, I'm just starting to think maybe I just can go and venture into my business shit right now and I can rest on rap. And I don't know why I thought that it was like a quick, it maybe was a day I thought it for only one day or some shit. But I thought that I was like, I'm gonna stop and just go and get on my entrepreneur shit and say fuck this shit. But then I just said, you know what I'm saying, get back in my mode. How hard is it to deal with I guess what has to feel like rejection, you already know that you're talented because you've been able to create hits mm -hmm. and you've been able to continue to have a buzz. But when, like you said, when you go to the DJ coalition and you feel like they aren't feeling the song or you drop a song and you say people didn't necessarily like it, you know, he's like, okay, I'm gonna get on my entrepreneurial stuff. How hard is it to ignore those things and just keep working? It's not hard to ignore, like, I say, like, okay, so, I really like the song, and when they didn't like the song, that's what fucked me up, because it wasn't just, like, I know the song ass, and everybody else thinks it's ass, I really like the song, and before I dropped it, everybody else liked it, too, so I'm like, it's, it's some type of, what everybody got against me, Why, where does hate train come from? That's what was getting to me, because it was just a, out of nowhere, a hate train, I feel like I had got, but most of the time, like, I don't respond to a lot of negative stuff on the internet about me because I know at the end of the day it's the internet and they get the, they freely, with their free will, get to type anything they want to on whatever page and say whatever. Mm -hmm. And don't even mean it. Like it could be somebody to say something on the internet, then when they see me on a picture, you know what I'm saying? And so it's hard and not hard at the same time. Like, right. You said, uh, the preacher actually preached about it. Every day the sun don't shine, that's why I love tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. Is that part of that mindset that you're going to have some days that yeah. aren't great? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you get to do it again the next day. Yeah, you, you live to see another day. You know what I'm saying? Like, every day ain't going to be no good day. You know what I'm saying? Life ain't perfect. Right. Life got its ups and downs. But I live to wake up tomorrow and open my eyes and start over with a whole another 24 hours then. That's what it is. I just want to tell you, um, and I don't really know how it works in music, but even with our show, we know we, we, we got dope content. And the views don't always match that. It doesn't mean your music isn't dope. Like, your music is for you first, because it comes from you and from your heart. And then it, it touches everybody else. As long as you keep making music for you, and you, you good with that, whether it resonate with everybody else or not, it's for you, it's your baby. So keep that, that thought in mind. But the question is that we always ask our guests is what's your biggest pivot? And what I mean by that is that one moment that you can clearly look back on and say, without this moment, there would be no me, who you are right here today sitting here. I probably have to say um, the year before uh, I blew up, I went through a lot, like uh, 2021. In the beginning of 2022, I blew up in May of 2022. And so like the whole year before that, it was like a real rough year. That's when I was still going through the bad relationship. I had got pregnant that year. I had lost my apartment that year. I lost my car. It's like I lost everything the year before I blew up. And I feel like it molded me into the person I am. Like I needed that one year, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? To put me in straight grind mode and put my eyes on the prize. Love that. Now that you have your eyes on the prize and we can see you 
everywhere. One, I think it's amazing that you love New Orleans. That's yeah. where I'm from. Two, you love the Steelers. Yeah. Was that genuine excitement when you got to meet Mike T? You was, were really that fired up. <laughs> I was that fired up. Like, I swear to God. Like, <laughs> I told you I played Madden. And I used to be in the living room with my dad and my brothers on Sundays watching the football games and shit. And you know what I'm saying? And so seeing Mike tell me, I never thought I was going to actually meet him in person. Like, never in my life did I think that. And so, and then, you know, I feel good because I actually got to watch my team win the Super Bowl when, when we beat the Cardinals. You feel me? And so I was there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I got to I got to watch that. And right. so like I just always brag different. Like, you know, we always hit the most Super Bowl up until the Patriots got their six one, whatever. We tied whatever. though. Yeah, we tied. They still ain't got more than us, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? And so I always like that's just one of my accomplishments. It, even though I don't even play for the Steelers, I feel like I do. I feel like that's my team. And anytime we're talking about football, can't nobody say shit to me <laughs> because we got six six rings. What y'all got? What you got? Oh, well, we got zero. What y'all got? It's all good. <laughs> we got zero. I can tell you What's this. The <laughs> What's the language yeah, of words? Right? <laughs> Go, so we got, all right, now we got Russ, so Sierra going to be there. I'm so happy about that. I'm, we're going to go up to the Super Bowl. Next year. We going to uh -oh. Super Bowl again? Hell yeah. You heard us. I heard We back in it. Hell yeah. And we finna get seven. Seven. <laughs> and then we gonna be by ourselves. You know, I, I I'm question. trying to work on the song for the Steelers. I want to have to uh, do what Wiz Khalifa did with Black and Yellow. So mm. I want to be able to make a song. But it got to be the right song. It got to be the right. And yeah. you got to hold it, though, too, till the season get close. Yeah. Right? Hell yeah. I, I believe Black and Yellow. Like, I'm a real See, but that's Steelers crazy, fan. though, because I, I, like, we used to play against the Steelers all the time. And I know the terrible towels. They are probably the best fan base yeah. in the entire league. <laughs> and I can say that, and people in Jacksonville don't kill me, but they know how it goes, uh, traditionally. How in the hell you become a Steelers? You down south. How you become a Steelers fan? I'm telling you, I just know I've been a Steelers fan since I was three years old. I don't know how I became one. <laughs> three? Because nobody, yeah, since I was three years old. I don't know how I became one, but I just know since I was three years old. And nobody in my family was a Steelers fan. My daddy say my grandma was, which is my daddy mama, but she died before I was born. And I got her name and everything. But my daddy used to always say, yeah, you a Steelers fan just like my mama was. Uh, wow. all that. You know what I'm saying? But my daddy a Raiders fan. Okay. And everybody was Cowboys, Buccaneers. Giants fan, nobody was a Steelers fan in my family but me. And so, like, I just used to shit on everybody because we, <laughs> we had the most rings. What, what, what year were you born? 99. So when you were three, that was 2002? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I used to get you out of business back then. <laughs> I know but did they you win a ring? Do, how many rings? How you, many rings? You, what, you, you, how you many rings? You must be hanging out with him. How hey, many rings? I got zero rings. Fred was 43. So I already heard it. He's 43 when she was like 24. <laughs> my, 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 my last thing for you, though, with, you know, yeah, we're dropping new music right now with the, the tour. Uh, what can we expect from Glorilla in the next week? What is, what, what is this, what is this going to sound like for us? Well, with everything, everything dropping, I just feel like it's gangster. Like, I ain't even got no just really girl music on there. It's kind of girly, but it's a thug ass type of girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the vibe Eve, Eve give you, you yeah. know? Eve was like, you know what I'm saying? A, a, a rough route. You feel right, she yeah. was a girl, right. but a nigga at the same time. So <laughs> I'm just finna put that, the mixtape for the year out. Okay. And then it's preparing for my next project that's coming up in the summer. So this is just a, a preview of what we gonna get. Yeah, yeah this is just really a sneak peek. This project is a sneak peek of what I'm finna drop in the summer. Well, listen, we appreciate you. Thank you for being so open, so honest with us. And I, I've been excited about this since I messaged you. Yeah. And we knew it could happen. And obviously, you're working with Didier, who we've worked with, who was amazing. So we appreciate your time. I appreciate y'all for having me. Thank you. Now, yeah. Ava Rex, hard, hey, though. Man, I don't even know if we Bro, needed no. y'all for this. <laughs> New Orleans, oh, Steelers, no. like, this is all love. She said food good, <laughs> Whatever, now, you know. So you a rapper, rapper, or like, you just rap a little bit? What you mean? Like off the cuff right now, can we just get a couple of bars? Like if I just ask you, just out the blue, right? Cause you said, you know, it's not really no girly music. That mean like if you ask, you supposed to be able to give us something right now. I'm a writer. <laughs> I'm, a writer. <laughs> I'm not a freestyle, I'm a writer. Ah. Okay, are right, you ready? Word beat it. Hold up, wait. <laughs> Did he do it on me? 
All right, cool. All right. You get back up. Good. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. 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 Black and yellow, Steelers fans with a white tee. Yeah. And you know I fuck with Mike T. Okay. Hey. Okay. I got, uh, I'm, I'm up uh, now. I'm yeah. up now. Uh. Uh. Yeah. When I was little, I used to build a fort. Now my girl here with the teleport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey. 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 Go on up. Go on up. You up? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Come on. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Oh. Let the black side rap, not the white side. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. I'm about to start really oh, the Patriots cheated us out of the Super Bowl when I was 16. Hey, but we still got six rings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, the Super Bowl, but yeah, the championship. Yeah, OK. OK, I'm back up. I'm back up. Oh, <laughs> come on, man. Yeah, go. Go, uh, cool. Oh. Uh, uh, I can't run uh, half white. You biracial. That's why you got low. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't know. <laughs> that's why I'm working with the black and yellow. Oh, no. I'm just trying to. <laughs> hey, hey. You got them balls. Hey. 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 hey! You my girl! Don't do that. Don't do that. You couldn't even get nothing out. You couldn't even get nothing out. No, you, you, no, you, even, you no, weren't even in the say, cypher. No, you weren't even in the cypher. Now you're you trying to come to get now. Like, no, I would say Mike T, Fred T, you rocking with the Steelers? GLO ain't another bitch realer. Oh! I see you, Freddie T! I see you, Freddie T! I see you, Freddie T! Crazy! Yeah. Hey. Yeah. That's love, oh, though. I love her. I love her. Oh, she's cool. She's cool. cool. she cool as hell. No, she's so fun, man. Yeah, she's this cool. This was a fun universe. She is so fun. Hold up. Limitless. Take a simic guy pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a simic guy pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission.